Welcome to the Four Visions Market Podcast, a space built on the principles of integrity and reciprocity. Together, we will engage in thought-provoking conversations about plant medicines, why these plants are coming out of the rainforests, jungles, and mountains after thousands of years, and what it means to be in right relationship with the ancestral wisdom cultures and guardians of these traditions. I'm your host, Mariah Ganessa, founder and director of Four Visions Market. This podcast is the natural evolution in our commitment to providing you, our tribe, with incredible resources to support you on your healing journey through plant medicines. Welcome home. Hola familia, welcome back. I'm so happy to be here today and bringing a solo episode this week. I've been really tuning in to... um, yeah, what I wanted to share today on the podcast. And one element that is feeling really present for me is uh, going into this practice of spiritual diets and plant diets and how to work with plants in this context of a container. And because ultimately the diet is an incredible tool that's very much accessible to us. And when we start to incorporate this way of working with plants, our studies with the plants become much more disciplined and focused and honed in and it's really beneficial to create this element of the spiritual container for our spiritual studies and this is kind of the background from which we offer all of our medicines through our platform felt like it was a really wonderful topic to kind of go a little deeper into we have spoken about spiritual plant diets on the podcast before We had Taito Juanito on the show uh, last year, and he was talking a lot about it. Uh, We'll reference that episode in the show notes if you want to check it out. But ultimately, especially now with the recent launch of our herbal apothecary, where we're now starting to share so many incredible plants in their raw form, I wanted to go a little deeper into how we can start to create these spiritual studies for ourselves and um, really be able to outline to you of the practice because it might feel a little intimidating if we've never done a diet and might think oh I can't do a diet on my own Um, but these practices of the diets are actually very easy to do um, and accessible and so I want to break it down a little bit just a side note here the practice of the plant diets and the way that I'm speaking about them today is in the context of the Ingano tradition there are many different indigenous tribes that work with diets and do the, um, the plant diets. And they are different for each tradition, each lineage. For example, the Peruvian dieta and the Brazilian plant diets are slightly different. And so I just want to reference that here and really honor the Inga people, um, which they are primarily, first and foremost, botanists. Uh, they are a tribe who lives in the Puto Mayo region of the Amazon jungle of Colombia. And for hundreds of years, they've been in that region. They migrated um, from Ecuador and came down um, many hundreds of years ago. And they have been stewarding these practices for their people and their way of communing with plants, their way of investigating and developing this inner dialogue with the spirits of nature is so profound. And I really love their teachings and their practices regarding this process of dieting because it really is something that we can incorporate into our spiritual practice to become a principal pillar and to sustain a very solid foundation for our spiritual growth and our evolution. And it's been so foundational for me in my studies. And, um, you know, I diet very frequently, either uh, shorter diets or uh, longer, more intense diets. And it's something that we can do, you know, even in our in the context of our daily lives, we can be doing a diet. And so it's so beneficial to be able to work with the plants in this way. And I want to basically give you kind of a breakdown today of what that can look like and how you might um, begin to do these types of studies for yourself. So within this context, the plant diet is very much that a container for spiritual study. And ultimately, we work with mm, plants in this way of intentionality to commune with them and to extract information from the plant kingdom and be able to bring it into our lives. 
um, to really embody this wisdom of nature and utilize it to inform our decision making, our sense of connection, interconnectedness with life, to nourish our connection with God and life force energy. We can utilize these, these practices um, in many different ways with many different intentions. So the first step is to really get clear on what you're wanting to work on and what your intention is. Maybe you're going through a, a process, a strong process in your life. Maybe you're leaving a job and you're not sure what your next step is or what that direction looks like. Or maybe you're coming out of a, a relationship, you're experiencing heartbreak and wanting to do some deep work to come back to yourself, to your wholeness. Um, perhaps you are preparing to become a parent and you want to diet and do a study to really honor that time of initiation. And perhaps you lost a loved one and you want to honor that time and transition. So diets really offer us tools to honor the sacredness of life and they offer us times to step out of the mundane and enter into this place of conscious awareness where we can then open ourselves and open our sensitivities as well um, to listen and to receive wisdom and guidance. And so in this way, when we go to diet, we place this intention and then really get clear on what we are seeking to get help with. And then from that place of really understanding what's coming up for you, what you're working on, then you can choose the plant ally that's going to align most, um, most clearly with that particular theme. And that's also part of why, you know, we recently launched our plant medicine education series to really um, help people in understanding the energetics and the unique design of each plant ally um, to really support in that process of being able to decipher and know um, uh, more about the plants. And then from this place of intuition, um, this knowing of which plant you need to work with will be very clear to you. And you might not know much about the plant, but it's just a clear call. Okay, I need to work with Chuchuwasi or I need to work with Bobinsana. And then you go study or read more about it and learn more about it. And then you're, you understand why um, you need to work with that medicine in that moment. Um, and so it's, it's a very much intuitive process. And then also, you know, there are many resources available on our platform and all over, thanks to the internet, to support you in, in learning more about the intellectual elements. Um, but ultimately, the process of dieting offers us this doorway into embodied knowing, where we're forming an intimate relationship with a plant and um, learn about the plant by this direct connection. And it's actually a very beautiful practice and study, just a little side note, to work with a plant without knowing anything about the plant, because then you'll really uh, tap in and really be able to distinguish, wow, okay, there's a lot of information that's coming to me beyond the thought, beyond um, what I've read about or heard, and it's very much just from a direct process and experience with the plant. So that's also a very beautiful way to study plants. Ultimately, though, we make a decision to work with one particular plant ally, and that becomes the pillar, the central focus of this particular study. Um, and then there may be other ally plants that you bring in to the diet, um, depending on, you know, what plants are um, already in your spiritual practice or what plants you're feeling called to complement that unique master plant teacher or the focus plant. Uh, for example, perhaps you want to complement your diet with hape, and so maybe there's a specific hape that feels aligned with um, that particular study with, say, ambisacha or chuchuwasi. Um, so that's one op option, or perhaps sananga feels really aligned. Maybe you're working to peel back, you know, the layers of the, the site to be able to see more clearly, and you want to be able to perceive life more clearly, and so you're working with Chiricaspi to be able to overcome your fears or whatever is holding you back from seeing the truth. And then you say, oh, you know what? I also want to bring in Sanangita and I want to work with Sananga um, during this diet with Chirikaspi because I feel like those two will really bring me the medicine and the information that I'm needing. So like this, you kind of go constructing what are going to be the plants in this container, in the spiritual container. An important part of the diets are working with plant baths. Working with bitter and sweet plants is really um, always involved with, with this type of container and study. 
And so you can work with one particular plant or you can work with blends, but you want to use both bitter and sweet. You'll work with bitter at the beginning of the diet. As you start going into the diet, settling into the diet, and then you'll switch to sweet about halfway through to bring closure, sweetness, uh, completion, and uh, bring everything full circle. And so the first thing, once you have really established what your diet is going to be about and what plants are going to work with, is to really tap in and take some time to tune into what are the commitments that you're going to make in the, in the practice that you are embarking on. One element is that of the, the container of time. We can do diets for as short as a week or eight days, um, and then there are diets that are multiple years long. We recommend starting with whatever is going to be achievable to you because it's an important element that whatever we commit to in the diet, we are able to sustain. So it's better not to overcommit yourself, and whether it be two weeks or a month for your first diet or even shorter, whatever it is is perfectly okay. Um, but it's important that whatever you commit to, that you really feel like you're going to be able to complete the diet in that process of that time element. And then the other element of the, of the commitments is this element of our spiritual payments and our offerings that take place during the spiritual container of a diet. So when we diet, we often give up certain elements, whether they be from our routine, whether they be from our diet, whether they be from our habits, and we do this for multiple reasons. Number one, this element of offering something, giving up something that is going to cost us or that is going to take some effort is a way of really presenting ourselves to the universe and to nature and really saying, I'm here for this. I'm going to offer these um, elements. Uh, I'm going to give them up, set them aside, um, not partake in these things during the context of my diet so that I can uh, really offer my fullest attention um, and energy to this spiritual study. The other element of why we do this is because when we do, when we do diet, we are seeking to reduce the energetic noise in the body to be able to increase our uh, sensitivity. Because when we increase our sensitivity, we're able to perceive and be more attuned to the downloads of information that are coming through the plants. And so when there's a lot of noise in the body um, through what we're eating, our diet, or through what we're consuming in the mind, then what happens is there's, um, it's harder for the plants to really speak. There's, there's so much noise, essentially, um, that it's harder to hear the messages that are coming uh, during this container. One example of something that's very common to give up, eliminate, or reduce during a diet is salt. Mm, the element of salt is something that creates a lot of heat in the body, and this heat is also energetically very loud. And so, um, it's often common to uh, reduce completely. You can replace if you don't use natural mineral salts or Himalayan salt already, um, even switching from iodized table salt to Himalayan salt and cutting your salt intake in half. That's something that is um, a really great way to work with this element of salt if you're not familiar with uh, reducing the intake of salt. And then the other, another example is that of sugar or caffeine. These elements of the diet or uh, red meat um, are, are other examples that really can be looked at within the context of our, our diet, what we're consuming. And the invitation within this is to make the changes to your diet, again, that are sustainable, that are within reach, that feel doable for you. For some, for their first diet, cutting out all processed foods is, is going to be a huge step. And that's great. It really just needs to cost you something and mean something. That's really the key element. And then as we go dieting, we are able to cultivate our discipline. We're able to really um, go deeper into some of these uh, bigger commitments. And so this is the element of the physical diet. First, we look at that and we make some commitments and clear decisions regarding our cleaning up of our physical diet and our physical food. Another big element that we can look at is um, our, our sexuality. The sexual energy is something that's very sacred, but it also can be utilized to nourish and fortify our spiritual connection. And so in 
all traditional indigenous diets, this element of celibacy is present when working with the plants. And the reason is that we want to harness this energy and focus it on our connection to nourish our spiritual studies during this time. It's not that sex is bad or that it's, um, that it's taboo in any way, but rather we create this separation during this period to really devote and, and um, direct our energy, our life force energy um, towards this, this process of spiritual expansion and evolution. And then there are the elements of our thoughts and dieting the thoughts, dieting what we consume in the media. This is another really big element to um, really evaluate within in this process of determining which uh, elements are going to be part of your diet. But often we look at our consumption of the media, of news, of social media, um, of being on our phones, of all technology as a whole. And then depending on what you're able to do, um, we eliminate something, something that is within reach that is going to, once again, reduce the energetic noise and make this offering of a commitment. We can also look at the element of spiritual fasting within the context of diets because this element is really powerful with this um, process of making a spiritual payment or an ofrenda, an offering to the spirits of nature. Once again, we're wanting to bring all this energy to really offer ourselves in humility to this process and really show up and present ourselves to the spirits of nature in this way. So looking at all of these different elements, you choose you know, the things that, that feel um, within reach and that you can sustain for the entire time because what you don't want to do is make a commitment that's really just too hard for you and then break it halfway through the diet because then it breaks the container, it breaks the commitment, and then the energy behind the spiritual study wavers. And so, um, once again, I really recommend for your first diet, start small, start with a small amount of time, start with giving up just a few things and see how it goes. And then over time, as you start to do these studies and these processes, you start to build that spiritual fortitude to be able to uh, be even more disciplined and uh, tap into these sensitivities. So all of these offerings, all of these elements, we take them out to really acknowledge that this is a sacred space, that this is a sacred container that we're creating. Hey, Four Visions fam, taking a quick break from today's episode to share about a really special new Four Visions offering. For the last six months, we've been busy working intimately with our indigenous botanists in both Colombia and Brazil on the sourcing of a collection of rare Amazonian plants, roots, barks, flowers, and seeds. We just launched the Rainforest Herbal Apothecary. As we continue to deepen our mission of integrating ancient plant medicine into the modern world, we are humbled and grateful for the next evolution of our brand. Offering deep bows of gratitude for the sacred earth medicines and the blessed opportunity to share the healing power of nature with people from all over the world, we want to thank our indigenous cultivators, botanists, healers, and our incredible Four Visions team for bringing this vision to life. And of course, you, our Four Visions community, for inspiring us to continue growing. Visit our website to check out the Rainforest Herbal Apothecary today with over 25 new ancient botanical remedies in their raw form. Our prayer is that these new offerings support you in deepening your relationship with sacred plant teachers by having access to their raw form. We are so looking forward to sharing more about each and every one of these incredible plant allies over the coming months and deepening our education initiatives for our community. But for now, go explore the new collection and let the plants speak to you. And now, back to today's show. And then the other element of creating your diet is really offering this start and this end. So same in line with this element of the timing and how long you're going to be in this process for. The beginning, you want to open the ceremony, open the ritual, open, open the container for yourself. And you can do this by um, going out in nature and making uh, an, a mandala or a flower offering, or you can uh, make other offerings with other herbs or crystals, maybe sing, smudge, pray, 
um, and really officialize the opening of the study for yourself. And then during each day of the diet, as you go working with the plants, we often recommend um, that there be this element of morning and night uh, where you're communing with the plants and checking in with um, your intentions and your prayers, um, both in the morning and the evening, so twice a day. And then if you have uh, the ability to do it more in the middle of the day or you perhaps have the uh, blessing to completely leave all of your responsibilities and you can be within this space all the time, um, then it really becomes this very um, deep and potent time of a lot of meditation, reflection, introspection. So in those morning and evening times, um, this is a time for our spiritual practice to meditate, to pray, to commune with whichever plant you're studying with, journal, um, and ultimately this is this moment of inner dialogue with the plants. So um, in the morning time, we want to be setting our intention for the day, drawing forth that inspiration from that uh, underlying foundational intention or prayer that's holding the diet, um, and really going into that new day um, really clear and connected with um, the energy of the plant and the prayers that are guiding that container that you're holding. And then you go through your day with this awareness, um, observing, attuning, seeing you know how your work with this plant and within the context of this space is affecting um, your interactions, your thoughts, uh, the ways in which you are showing up in your daily responsibilities. And then in the evening time, when you have come back from your day, uh, before you go to bed, once again, going into this place of meditation. And this is a time to reflect on the day and really uh, observe and think back to everything that was said, everything that was thought, everything that uh, you did and see, you know, where was there alignment there with the work that you're doing, perhaps where there was a misstep or a loss of that thread of connection. And this can be really a beautiful time also to uh, really review the thoughts because what happens in the spiritual diet as we increase our sensitivity, we start to have a really profound ability to recognize the thought patterns. And maybe a specific thought pattern will start to surface depending on the intention that we're working with. So for example, let's say you are dieting and working with Bobinsana and your intention is to open the heart, right? And then you start to realize in that throughout your day that you're starting to feel a lot of self-criticism or um, lack of self-love, right? And so the thoughts are saying, oh, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, or um, don't take that don't take that risk because you will fail or whatever it is there will be like a core theme that starts to surface in the thoughts and it's very important to be very aware and vigilant of the thoughts during a diet because for the Inga tradition the diet very much is a diet of thought as well that's a very foundational element because why we do these diets um, the, the grandfathers and the grandmothers teach is to cultivate these beautiful thoughts and to really be this ele essence of this beauty way of walking in beauty and in harmony and in union with all of life. And so it's always very interesting to start to see what thoughts start to be reoccurring within this container as we start to reduce the noise and open our sensitivities and start to perceive uh, the subtleties of the energetic world and the spirit world um, in, the, in the context of the container. So this reflection part in the evening is very important. This is also where we start to um, hone in on um, you know, some deep patterns that are coming up and um, we start to also be able to attune to what the medicine is working on, what the medicine is starting to move within us, bring up within us. And whatever the thoughts that you're starting to have or whatever patterns start to arrive, um, the other element to this process of the dieta is to start to plant the uh, nourishing thought, the thought that's going to harmonize and bring sweetness and transform the bitterness. So if you're having a lot of self-doubt come up and um, anxiety and lack of confidence, um, and that's being perceived in all the thoughts that you're thinking and it's, it's happening multiple times a day and you're very aware that that's what you are needing to address and work on. Then you start to really hone in what is the, uh, what is the counter thought to this process that's coming up. And then you start to work with that thought and feed that thought 
every time the negative thought or the bitter thought surfaces. And so maybe it's an affirmation, I'm worthy. I love myself and I'm worthy of love. And this is something that you just repeat to yourself and you, you really um, utilize it as like a mantra, an affirmation. And uh, throughout the peer process and the period of your diet, every single time those bitter thoughts come, you plant those sweet thoughts. And then what you start to see is over the period of the 30 days, six months, whatever it is, the thoughts transform and they start to become your natural inclination to go to the sweet thoughts and those seeds that you're planting start to bear fruit within the garden of the mind. And so it's a very beautiful process to witness and those evening meditations are really important because that's that time of self-evaluation, that's that time of reflection. Um, and then it's also the evening time meditation connection with the plants at night is also an important time to open up into the dream world and into the sleep because when we work with plants, the plants uh, harmonize and come into our energetic body and then when we go to sleep, they uh, support us in the non-waking world, in the dream world. Some plants are specifically for dream time, like the bobinsana, like the chiricaspi, tobacco. Other plants work during that time. They might not be specifically for lucid dreaming or getting in touch with our dreams, but they will naturally start to um, tap into the dream space and messages start to come in our dreams. And so working with the dreams and the nighttime is also a very core key element to this spiritual container of the diet. Uh, because when we go to sleep, that's a time when the thoughts turn off and the energetic body also quiets down. And so we're more perceptible and we have the ability to tap into other dimensions and other worlds and the information that comes to us within the dreams is more easily perceivable and tangible when we are working within the context of a diet. Um, even if what you're, the plant that you're dieting is not a dream plant necessarily, you'll find that the dreams start to become more vivid, more concentrated, more um, solid or accessible when you're doing these diets. And so what you want to do in that nighttime meditation is place this intention when you commune with the plant to open the portal of the dream space so that the spiritual studies can be accessed uh, during this time when we are asleep. The nighttime is a very sacred time where the spirits of nature come and it's a time often where we are um, most many traditional cultures will do their rituals or their ceremonies at night. And there are many different reasons for this, but ultimately this is a time when um, the quiet comes and the, the vibration and the spirits and its nature and of creation come as well. And so being able to open just even with the intention of accessing these places, the cosmic library, the celestial library of information that exists in the other worlds in the non-waking world, um, you'll start to see in the period of your, your spiritual container, the di you might remember your dreams more vividly, or um, you might start to have really strong or strange or um, fascinating dreams. And so within the context of a spiritual diet or a container such as this, um, evaluating or journaling or just observing the dream time is super crucial. And you want to do that first thing when you wake up in the morning before you set your intentions for the next day. The very first thing is to connect with the place in which you went to when you were asleep and to really tap in and draw from that well of wisdom and information that is there. It's right there. And the moment that you wake up is the moment where we're the closest to that, that world. We've just come back into the waking world. And so um, even if you don't remember what you dreamed, you can call upon that energy and the essence of the information that was there. Dreaming is such a fascinating art of study and there are so many ways to work with dreams. Uh, but for the context of the spiritual container, really the most important thing is to open ourselves to the uh, opportunity to do profound spiritual work, travel, um, and to bring forth information into the waking world. And so even in this process, without even knowing what we're, what we're looking for or what we are 
um, even receiving or even not being able to interpret our dreams. None of this is as important as being open and being receptive because oftentimes the interpretation of the dream can, can go back into the thinking mind and can distract us from the essence of what that dream is doing for us. A lot of times we are organizing in dreams, a lot of times we're cleaning, purifying in dreams, and then there are dreams that provide guidance or information or vision or counsel. And so over time, as you start to tap into the sensitivities of this space, we start to bring that information into our daily life and into our waking world. And so this is the context with which the dream time and the, the sleep time is very much important within the context of the spiritual diet and the container. And uh, ult ultimately throughout the period of your, your diet, whether it be a couple weeks or longer, you start to see a progression in that connection. And so really that process of observation throughout the entire diet becomes fundamental in really being able to attune and be aware and observe the subtle changes that are taking place within the energetic, physical, and spiritual bodies throughout the diet. As you near the end of the diet, as you switch into the sweet plants, as you start to bring completion to this process, it's also very important to um, really start to acknowledge and reflect what changes are taking place in the thoughts, in your interactions with other people, how you're feeling uh, within your own being. And so one of these key elements of the, of the dieta is this process of observation, reflection, and action. And so if you're not sure what action needs to be taken, um, you start to really attune to what you're observing within your own being through the process and pray, placing your intention in your prayer and meditation for clarity about what the action is that you need to start to take. And then you start and take that step forward. Maybe it's a clarity that you are in a relationship that is nearing its close and that it's time for you to um, choose yourself and choose um, your, your, the truth of your heart and prepare yourself um, for that next step. Maybe it's an acknowledgement that there are certain um, patterns or habits that you have accumulated that no longer serve you. Maybe you need to give up um, something long-term in your diet, or maybe you need to um, change your relationship to um, anything, right? Exercise or uh, media or your spiritual practice, your discipline. All of these things, you know, become, start to become really clear during the context of a diet and this process of action is the most important element of why we diet, right? It's, it's good to see, it's important to be able to see, but if we don't take the action, the step forward, um, then why are we really doing this in the first place? And so this element can be really supportive to invoke this, the elements of protection, of, of guidance, allyship from the plants, um, your ancestors as you start to get clearer because sometimes the action that we need to take can be scary and sometimes within a context of a diet something is revealed to us and it's it's overwhelming to really think about what that decision is and if it's a big decision leaving your job changing careers moving these decisions you need to really take time with let them integrate process and meditate and pray about them for a period of time after the dieta closes uh, before making that step from this place of clarity and inner knowing. Um, but then there are some other subtler things that can be you know, changed immediately and you really just have to decipher uh, within your own being um, what, what, when and how to make those changes and, and, and take that action. So ultimately, when we diet and we come out of this process, you want to close the, the container just in the same way that you opened with intentionality, with reverence, with gratitude for the process that you went through, really honoring yourself for showing up in this way and honoring all of the guardians and allies that accompanied you in supporting you in this, in this study and then closing it in a ceremonial way, offering ritual, making a spiritual payment, and an offering to nature. Um, so many different elements that you can call upon to essentially close the container with that awareness and intentionality. It's important to close these diets and not to just waver back into our, our everyday lives 
um, because that closure really honors this, this portal that you have created and really gives way to the transition into the next step, the next chapter. And the process of integrating from these spiritual diets is also very profound because then as we start to return and implement and incorporate some of those things back into our lives, we stop working with the plant in such an intensive way, we start to really perceive um, the ways in which this experience has changed us and affected us. Maybe it gave us more spiritual strength, maybe it gave us more sense of clarity, empowerment, or um, softness, love, opening. Um, and so we want to cultivate that energy, whatever we received from the dieta and our work with the plants, we want to bring it into our lives and, and continue to cultivate watering those seeds that we planted. And um, whether you continue working with that plant uh, subtly, either in microdoses or less frequently to continue sustaining that connection of the information that you received, or simply by going back to that place in your daily meditations to reconnect with that potency of the study that you just went through. Um, it's important to have that regular check-in to, especially in those first few weeks after a diet, to really maintain the, the connection and the inspiration for change and transformation that um, is going to need to happen in your life as you go forth and start um, really walking from this place of um, deeper rootedness and connection with nature and self. So this is the process of the dieta. Uh, it's a very beautiful process and um, is something that really can become an incredible tool, an asset and resource for you in your spiritual toolbox. And ultimately it's an opportunity to step away from the mundane and create sacredness and, and ritual in our daily lives. And in this way, we nourish our spiritual studies and our connection with nature. Thank you so much for listening and um, tuning in to this conversation. And I hope that this is supportive and offers some clarity for you and encouragement to begin working with plants in this way, because it's very beautiful to deepen our relationship with plants and with the plant allies by working um, within this context. And it can be very nourishing and, and potent uh, and really allow for a whole level of depth to come into our spiritual studies and our practice with plants. And this is how these plants are meant to be worked with, with this level of intentionality and awareness. And um, of course, there are so many different ways and levels in which to work with plants. and. Um, we really, you know, provide these medicines and these sacred tools to really complement and fortify your spiritual studies in a variety of different ways. And so um, this element is really even more so present and important now that we are sourcing and sharing so many of the bulk herbs and the raw form because working with them um, in this way will just really activate your connection on a whole new level to the plants. And um, we welcome you, encourage you to check out the Rainforest Herbal Apothecary and learn a little bit more about all of these new medicines that we're sharing with the community. And um, to really go from that place of intuition and openness and the beautiful thing about working with plants and nature is that it's ever unfolding and infinite, this journey into the plant kingdom and to nature as a whole. And so little by little, you know, you can go, you can study one plant and form a relationship with one plant, go integrating that into your life. And then later on, go work with another plant. And in this very focused way, we, we really open ourselves to a whole new level of um, relationship with the plants and uh, relating to them and forming this this connection um, on a whole new way. And so thank you so much for listening and sending you many blessings on your path and on this beautiful day. On behalf of the Four Visions family, we want to thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you have enjoyed this conversation and have gained seeds of wisdom that will nourish your spiritual path. If you have a moment, please leave us a review as this helps us to reach more people. For more resources and information about the plant path and for the highest quality spiritual tools and botanicals, please visit us at fourvisions.com. We are grateful for your support and look forward to continuing this journey with you all. Until next time.